almost two days have passed since the latest nerf to Demon Hunter, so now we can start seeing what the best new Hearthstone decks are right now. So in this video I will give you five of the best decks, show you their mulligans, win rates, as well as some general tips for them, so you guys have a better idea of what you're playing with, as well as what you're playing against. So if you're serious about Hearthstone, drop a like and subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to get for some Hearthstone coaching. Now let's check out the decks. Prepared. The obvious winner from the nerf so far seems to be Spell Token Hunter, and this deck has tons of gameplay and above 60% win rate for the last two days, so it's definitely a very good deck to be climbing to Legend with. We're no longer running Glacial Shards or anything like that, but instead we're opting for the Barracoto Bane, Leroy and Mantle Shaper package. And for the Mantle Shaper to work, you still need a bunch of bananas, as well as some Barrel of Monkeys, which did work well against Demon Hunters, but let's not forget Demon Hunter is not exactly dead, so you're still gonna be making use of them, and let's not forget they're actually nice and sticky minions for your Jungle Gym, as well as for your RC Rampage. We're also running a Vicious Litter Spear here, because it works so well with the bunch of bananas. Observer of Myths helps you buff the entire board, just be careful how you buff the board, because if you plan on buffing it through the help of Leoc with Observer of Myths on the board already, that's not really gonna buff from Myths and from Leoc, because that doesn't work like that. The reason is Leoc gives this guy plus one first, so this becomes a two attack, and then Observer of Myths decides that Leoc's on the board, but he's already at two attacks, so that doesn't buff it. Same can be said for Zilliax if you go for that, so if this guy's already at two attack, and you plan on buffing with Zilliax, that's again not gonna be working, because Zilliax is a free attack minion, and he's gonna be giving the plus one before Observer of Myths decides that Zilliax came into play. Other than that, the rest of the deck is pretty standard, you basically wanna be zerging the board usually, with a bunch of beasts so your jungle gems are nice and active, flood the board with RC Rampage, and once you have a decent amount of minions on the board, also Saddle Up becomes very hard to deal with, so yeah, winning with this deck definitely is not a problem, if you know how to play it, and you can check out some of my guides and gameplay videos too. Matchup wise, here's what the stats show so far, and everything is hella green, including Shopper Demon Hunter, because that one turn extra definitely helps the deck plenty, and means that Macterodon is gonna be dropping a turn later, and that's gonna be a turn too late for the Demon Hunter to be stabilizing. As for the Mulligan, here's what the stats show going first. Torn Mantle Musician is great, Sneaky Snakes is also amazing. If your hand supports it, Zilliax can also be a keep, like if you already have something like Sneaky Snakes, Remote Control, RC Rampage, that kind of deal. In that case, Zilliax might be dropping even as soon as turn 4. But usually you don't really keep him, unless you really feel like you're gonna be dropping him early. RC Rampage is great, Vicious Litter Spear is also nice, Awakened Tremor is still great, Remote Control is good, Barrel of Monkeys ain't bad, and again, if the hand supports it, even a Saddle Up might work. Like, if you already have Sneaky Snakes into Barrel of Monkeys, turn 3 triple Saddle Up is still not a bad thing to be doing. As for on the coin, it's not much different, but here we can also see that uh, things like Mantle Shaper become a lot more keepable, because you are gonna have an extra card as well as an extra coin, and that is huge for this guy but the rest looks pretty similar. Honestly, I feel like Jungle Gym is gonna be a decent keep in both cases, even though it is quite the low tempo for turn 2. For other good Hunter decks right now for the past couple of days, as you see, it's nothing but Spell Talking Hunters, so yeah, you can't really go wrong with the Spell Talking Hunter right now, and this is the variant I showed you, 60 plus percent win rate, 15,000 games, that's a lot of games for a couple of days, guys. On the number 2 spot we have another obvious winner, and that is Zerimi Priest, which is definitely not an easy deck to pick up, but it's very worth if you know how to play it. It's a little bit too good honestly if you ask me, and it might be getting in for a nerf soon, because it does some pretty toxic things, including things like literally OTK kind of damage as soon as turn 3, and OTKing people as soon as turn 5, which is definitely not fun for the opponent. No surprises in this list, we're still running a pretty pretty standard variant of it. We are running the Dream Boats, which help you put some very big minions, as well as help you with the overheal mechanic with the Crimson Clergy, and you can either use this for a huge tempo, or even for the OTK with the help of Zerimi, because as soon as turn 7 you could have a full board, slap Zerimi, slap Dream Boat, and the Dream Boat would be a 7-8. Celestial Projectionist can be used in all sorts of different ways, including getting extra clergies, including getting extra dragons so you can get Zerimi faster, Usually you want to be using it for extra zero mana first you drifters, but also extra dream boats and even extra zilliaxes can be absolutely amazing, especially if the opponent already played a few minions, because if you have a zero mana zilliax, with a 2 mana Celestia you can drop another 0 mana Zilliax and that's plus 2 plus 2 on the whole board, and not very many classes can deal with that nonsense that early. 
Pip is also pretty great in here, but you do need to keep a few one drops in order for her to really pop off. And one of the best one drops you could be copying with Pip would be the Funnel K because that's tons of mana cheats. We also have Magatha in here, personally I don't really like her, we are running 6 spells in this one after all, and uh, it's just a little bit too slow tempo, I would honestly uh, swap her out for something like Harsh Stonebrew if I have to be completely honest. He's also not the most amazing card in the world, but he can definitely save you otherwise unwinnable games, because once you pop off and the opponent actually handles it, you're not really gonna be left with much else to actually refill, let alone connect with the opponent's face. As for the matchups, here's what the stats show. Pain Warlock is not gonna be your friend, but everything else looks pretty doable, including Spell Token Hunter, which is gonna be a 50-50. As for the mulligan, here's what the stats show, you definitely could be checking out my detailed guide about this deck from a few days ago, if you want to really go into the details. But yeah, you basically want to be curving out decently well with the early game. Funnel Kick could be a keep, especially if you already have one or even two Crimson Clergies. Scale Replica is a bit too slow for a turn 2 against some opponents, but it can definitely help you out draw a bunch, including your Zeremia, obviously. Just don't forget you don't run that many dragons in the list, so definitely double check before you play this, so you don't get burned drawing only a single card with it. As for on the coin, the stats are kind of similar, so yeah, mulligan accordingly. For other good priest decks right now, probably nothing else is really gonna be showing here, so yeah, definitely tons of different Zerimi priests, Highlander priest, not exactly amazing, but yeah, tons of different iterations of Zerimi Priest out there, including the ones with Hearthstone Brew I was talking about, but they also run Magatha. If you're facing a lot of uh, nature shamans, you might actually consider Speaker Stompers, even though they kind of feel awkward in a deck like this. On the number 3 spot, surprise surprise, Shopper Demon Hunter is still actually hella fine, and it is close to 60% win rate still, even with the nerf to the weapon. Literally nothing has changed to the deck list, honestly, we have seen this variant of the deck plenty of times, it is running Pawzik in this one, and we're also having Zilliax in here with the end of the turn deal free damage, as well as the doubling up attack. We also have Kane Sunfury in this one, and that is gonna help you against some of them Wheel Warlocks and their pesky taunts. But all around, I really don't need to be going over the deck, am I? Like, uh, yeah, the, the weapon nerf definitely makes for a turn later uh, dropping of the Window Shopper, and that's also a turn later Macterodon. Matchup wise, here's what the stats show. Amazingly green still, huh? Kinda, kinda weird, honestly, but uh, people definitely have stopped running uh, tons of different uh, frost uh, glacial shards and frost weapons and whatnot. Right now, the uh, bug with uh, Death Knight is actually kinda still probably a problem for a uh, Shopper Demon Hunter, because right now, if you actually discover the Quartz Size Crusher through the help of that one mana discover weapon card, it actually gives all of your other discovered weapons the ability to freeze, including the plague weapon or any other weapon you pick up. So right now, that's actually quite the problem for Shopper Demon Hunter, I'd imagine. I'm not sure if the bug is fixed, do let me know in the comments, but last time I checked, if the Death Knight has the option to pick a Quartz Size Crusher in that spell, all of their weapons actually gain the ability to freeze, which is hella hella dumb, but that is the reality we live in. As for the Mulligan, again, not much has changed, you still want to be getting the weapon nice and early, Frequency Oscillator is fine, Drone is also decent, Miracle Salesman, try not to keep too many one-drops, however, Instrument Tech is still great, Weapon is actually kind of low on the keep list nowadays, but um, people still keep the hell of it, but uh, the win rate for when it's getting kept is actually not that high, so keep an eye on that, but obviously instrument tech is still pretty king. As for on the coin, the situation is not much uh, different, but as you can see, the weapon is a lot more keepable, because you can coin it out as soon as turn 3. What the hell is this ball hog this high? These stats are all over the place, not gonna lie. Uh, through Fell and Flame could be a keepable card, so you can actually rush something down as soon as turn 1 if you have a good one drop. So yeah, mulligan accordingly, and again, you could be checking my guys about this deck. For other good Demon Hunter decks, that's about it. Like, it's all still Shopper Demon Hunter, and yeah, close to 60% win rate, but uh, above 700 games for the last couple of days. A lot of people have dropped it, but it's still actually working quite well. We have a lot more populated list here, with the difference here being, what is even the difference? The Zilliax? Yeah, this one goes for the plus ones, but the difference is actually quite uh, quite big, and the main reason is uh, Zilliax like this is actually an entire game plan, because if you coin this guy out as soon as turn 3, and the opponent can't handle it, minus 10 health last time I checked is kind of a big deal for a deck like that. On the number 4 spot, we actually have Pain Warlock, which was another... 
uh, deck we were speculating might actually pop off hella fine after Demon Hunter loses popularity, and right now that is actually the reality. This is definitely not an easy deck to pilot well, because you are always going to be uh, needing to find the balance between life and death kind of deal. Uh, if you want your Molten Gems to be dropping down to zero, you have to be literally sitting at 10 health, and you're actually quite good at dropping yourself that low. And you can also drop zero mana and post horrors that way pretty quickly. Just don't forget that actually playing Blood Treant does not account for Imprisoned Horror, even though it kind of makes no sense to me, if I gotta be completely honest. Like, you are spending health, this costs health, so your hero is taking damage. But, um... Uh, I think I've uh, talked to the devs about this and they, they know it works like that, it's working as intended. The Blood Treant is not considered as taking damage, it's considered as spending health, which apparently is different in their eyes, but for me, I was actually quite surprised it doesn't work with this guy. Either way, obviously the name of the game with this deck is build an obscenely high uh, amount of boards super super early and a lot of opponents cannot do a single thing about it, including control warriors. Like if you drop a turn 4, bunch of molten giants, both bunch of 5 mana imprisoned horrors, the warrior literally does not have a single way to actually do anything against you. Uh, so uh, it's definitely not an easy deck to pilot well, I will probably be doing a guide about it soon, but honestly I also have to get used to this deck because it's definitely not uh, super easy to get the hang of. Matchup wise, here's what the stats show, as you can see we're not actually seeing Demon Hunter popping out right now because the popularity is kind of low for it, but if, if it was on these stats it would have been a bit worse. Like if I drag last 30 days instead, look at this Shopper Demon Hunter totally wrecks you, same with Nature Shaman apparently, and Spell Talking Hunter was actually not a great deck for you in the last 30 days. But right now for the last few, very surprising that actually uh, Spell Talking Hunter does not pop off on these matchups, cause uh, as you saw 15,000 gains, like how did the pain lock dodge him? As for the mulligans, here's what the stats show going first, you wanna be curving out with the Flame Imp, Blood Treant's nice, Elemental Geo's good, Fracking helps you get some other stuff uh, quicker, but I don't know, does it make enough sense to actually hold on to that? I guess you do have Furnace Fuels in this one, so if you actually have them still in the deck, it's a good chance of you to actually draw a bunch. But you would much rather be playing Flame Imp in the early turns rather than trying to draw. Imprisoned Horror can also be great, but try to be uh, having a good amount of self-damaging stuff already, because if you don't, it's gonna be kind of hard to drop. And the Malefic Rook ain't uh, too bad either. As for on the coin, the situation is not that much different, still you want to be curving out with the good stuff. Defender of Argus is kind of a weird inclusion, but it is gonna help you actually uh, drop some zero mana giants or five fives. And uh, with this guy make him into plus ones as well as taunts, so uh, if you're against a board centric matchup, they're not gonna be clapping your face that much. And on the number 5 spot we also have Wheel Warlock, which was also an obvious winner through the Demon Hunter nerfs, because Demon Hunter was actually quite the bad matchup for it. Both because they had uh, things like Kane as well as the red cards, and they were dealing just simply too much damage too early. This particular list is running the end games, it's also running some elemental geos for more card draw, Drain Soul and Defile also make the cut in this one. Uh, we do have a couple of dark ally packs and that's where you get your big demons for the end game to work. And another demon you have in the deck would be Sir Garrus, as well as the idiots he's summoning. So uh, be careful playing end game after a full board of Sir Garrus and 3-2 imps have died, because you might end up just spending 2 mana for a fucking flame imp. Phanotem is actually not a demon, despite appearances, he's a phantom, that's different, I don't know, I guess they all look the same to me. Uh, Forge of Wills is amazing, so you can actually do some pretty big uh, Dark Ally Pact action. You still have Symphony of Sin in this one, which is excellent after you've actually played Wheel of Death so you don't start taking fatigue damage, and this is also an excellent way to actually counter uh, Plague Death Knights if they plan on uh, playing Helia after your wheel. This way you ensure that you're not gonna be top decking nothing but plagues. Loken is pretty fine in this one, the only two really big minions you can pull out of him would be Sir Garrus and Phanotem. So uh, be careful if you already drew both of them, it's probably not gonna be hella fine. We're not running uh, the Doomkins in this one, which honestly feels a little bit weird. But with slower decks not being as popular on ladder right now, I guess it makes sense. Even though God knows it's gonna be helping you big time in the mirror matchup. As for the matchups, here's what the stats show. And Pain Warlock would be a bitch against you, cause uh, they just simply do way too much way too early. But anything else is actually quite doable, including Zarimi Priest, which is kind of... Close to the same deal, but yeah, Zarimi Priest builds uh, 
big small boards like uh whereas pain lock builds big big boards like this goes wide and small whereas this goes wide and tall with eight eights and such so uh, you can't really handle those whereas with the zerimi you actually can so there's that for the mulligan here's what it shows when going first again you could be checking my guides about this deck coaching videos gameplays all of that good stuff if you want to really get uh, to know this deck's ins and outs uh, but yeah, fracking ain't bad. This is actually a pretty nice way for you to also be uh, dumping out some plagues if you're playing against Death Knight. I would rather play the fracking after the opponent has shuffled a bunch of plagues. Low can be, can be hella good, even though going first it is a little bit tricky holding straight up onto it depending on the matchup. Again, if you're expecting uh, board-centric stuff, the Fallen Drain Soul can work, Mortal Eradication as well. Elemental Geode is always gonna be fine, the location should be pretty decent in most cases. I'm not sure why this is this low, like people keep it uh, the hell out of it, but they actually don't uh, get that big win rate apparently. But yeah, depending on the matchup you're gonna be mulliganing very differently, so these stats are a little bit awkward. As for on the coin, the situation is uh, kind of similar. Loken becomes even more keepable here, depending on the matchup. Wheel could be a keep straight up, but a lot of times you actually don't win through the Wheel of Death. So don't always try to win the same way against different opponents. Like if you're against aggro, the name of the game is just don't die. Like you're not going to be playing the wheel unless you actually already have a location and a fan of them in your hand. In that case, yeah, destroy your deck so you can drop a zero mana 15-15, but... Uh, if you just plan on sticking for five more turns, the opponent is uh, pushing your face in hard enough without you taking fatigue damage, so please don't. So yeah, what I'm trying to say is, depending on the opponent, the mulligan is going to be very different, as well as your game plan. Like against fast decks, you just survive long enough, uh, build big boards with the forge, stuff like that. As for other good warlock decks, even sludge warlock actually shows on the radar again, and uh, yeah, demon hunter was kind of awkward for it. So with that lower in popularity, you might actually want to give this one a go again. God knows I might. But that's about it for warlock. For the classes we haven't mentioned, starting off with death knight, rainbow death knight is still uh, quite fine. This one has very low sample size for me to list it, but uh, the second best is 2,500 games, 56% win rate, definitely nothing to scoff at. We also have straight up plague decay doing nice and fine sitting at 55 11 000 games pretty good stuff and there are also some other weird iterations of death knight like what is this even hand buff yeah this is hand buff uh death knight that can also do some stuff i guess but it's really a little bit too slow for the current meta if you ask me so yeah it's uh, gonna be rainbow or plague dk for you right now as for druid dragon druid is the only one showing on the radar right now i think we're just gonna have to let uh druid cook a little bit longer if you want to be seeing some new stuff uh two days is not enough for the small sample size dra uh, druid is getting right now with mages rainbow mage is still at the top of the lists not that amazing right now it seems it's a bit too slow for the current meta uh in my opinion and also it had a decent matchup against the demon hunter so with those gone it's not uh as a higher win rate with paladins we are seeing some different iterations of flood pally as well as hand buff pally so both seem to be working decently well albeit with very low sample size so far but keep an eye on those they should be growing with rogues right now zilliax rogues seems to be at the top uh this particular list has the biggest sample size it seems with a close to 55 win rate miracle rogue is also doing fine even though not as much but again, it has decent sample size to say the least. With Shaman, I was expecting Nature Shaman to really be off the chain right now. Uh, I am believing that people are just misplaying the hell out of this deck because it's far from the simplest out of the bunch. Uh, but yeah, we have a 55% rate with uh, 5200 games, which is definitely nothing to scoff at. And uh, with a hard deck like this, having it at 55, that means it's actually hella strong. Because if you're uh, really good with this deck, this percent is probably going to be above 70 so uh yeah definitely keep an eye on nature shaman and if you're seeing too many of those you might want to start taking some uh uh spell uh cost increase like neophytes and speaker stompers but if you're not seeing too many of those probably just uh pray you don't uh, face one random one here and there and lastly we have warrior highlander warrior seems to be uh still at the top of the lists odin warrior is still playable it seems and we have different iterations of those two lists basically, so those would be your two options for Warrior right now. That's gonna be it for this top 5 guys, hope this helps you figure out what you wanna be playing after the latest nerfs happened. If you enjoyed the video and like what I'm doing, drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget you can hire me for some Hearthstone coaching. Thanks for watching, I'm Crystal5 and I'll see you in my next video, or stream.